Howdy, hotshots. Beaming to you from not a financial advisor land with not financial advice, it's Kevin with Earth 2 Mastery, one of your top 39.7625 favorite digital investment YouTubers. All right, so grab your 12-shot ring caps because this video is banging. We got a lot of info to cover here, a lot of commentary to make. I'm going to talk your ear off. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen, maybe some of you haven't, there was an Ask Me Anything AMA. That's what that's what, yes, AMA. Gag thinks it's American Medical Association. Ask Me Anything, Gag. Right, go back to watching your soap operas. She likes the telenovelas. They teach her Spanish. Okay, so they had an Ask Me Anything with, I think his name is Rice, Reese, Rice, from Ecomi. Dude is pretty sharp, man, and he is, uh, you know, he's good at, he's good at not giving up the ghost when it comes to a lot of the licenses and stuff like that. You know, he has to be, to be out there and be the public face. Uh, but he said some things here that I want to go over. Uh, a couple things that make me kind of question what's going on. A couple things that are really exciting. Uh, so let's go over what we got here. I got my pencil here. I got my pencil here so I can check it off. <laughs> oh, oh my, my beard. I got mask beard, but aren't we all wearing a mask all the time anyway? Okay, so they were asking him. One thing that they were asking, the thing that we've been talking about the last couple days, Indy Kayla and their tweets about the Premier League and they tried to pin him down, you know, but he wouldn't let him pin him down. They said, hey, what about Premier League? Uh, you know, they were making all these comments. He goes, well, you know, these announcements from other people, they don't really matter. Uh, and he's absolutely right. Anybody can announce anything. We'll get into my announcement later in the video. Okay. So anybody can announce anything. And somebody said, somebody did say, they said, listen, you responded to him. And he said, yeah, I did. He goes, but I, you know, whatever, that doesn't mean anything. I'm a fan of Premier League, even if we don't have them as a licensor, okay? So, you know, that was pretty smart of him to say. I still feel like there's a connection there. You don't tweet from official accounts like that just because you're a fan. There's some sort of a connection. If you look at who they're following, there's connections. If you look at who they've communicated with before, there's connections. So, you know, I'm still going with the whole, you know, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire thing that I keep running into the ground, beating that dead horse. Uh, but listen, 2FA is supposedly live for many, I think. Um, and there's an article out there. We'll go over that uh, tomorrow about how the 2FA is going to work. Basically, initially, 2FA is going to be a, an email to your account anytime you're transferring something valuable, whether it's OMI, gems, or a collectible. You're going to have to have an email at your account, uh, at your email account that you can then type in your authorization number. They said there's going to be a Google 2FA later, possibly Authenticator later, uh, but not right now. Yesterday, there were 5,000 more people in the market. I am not one of them, so I'm still not in the market. Ooh, and I'm not on the market either. I'm taken. Miss Earth 2 Mastery wants you guys to know I'm taken, okay? But gag is available. Uh, DeLorean. Oh, this was a good one. Somebody asked him, they said, do you think it was wise with this big drop, this big DeLorean drop, um, you know, while the, app, while the app was still in beta? And he said, well, you know, it's not really a big drop. So, oh my gosh, what is big if the DeLorean from Back to the Future is not big? Uh, you know, obviously, Back to the Future was a while ago. They have not remade it, okay? So I could imagine if they came out with something uh, that was relevant and timely and popular now, Pokemon, <coughs> Pokemon, uh, this would not be considered a big drop. But it was big to me, and I'm glad I was involved. And I got an ultra rare, interactive, one-to-one. -one. I could park it in my driveway, and I could go out there and lift my little door up and down. Pretty happy about it. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to take a picture in front of my DeLorean, but it, the, the way the AR works, I don't know. I think I might need a new phone. Tell me, guys, if you have a good phone with LiDAR on it and you know it supports AR really well, can you put your DeLorean down and then go stand next to it and get a picture uh, be with you between your car and your phone? Can you get a picture like that? Because the car kept going in front of the person when I was trying to take it with my phone. So I couldn't do what I wanted to do, which was to take a picture. 
uh, with my DeLorean. Okay, guys. Oh, and say homie is my homie for the algos down below. Homies of omies. Okay, and AR. Oh, this was so cool. This is what I've been thinking about. And actually, um, Ian over at New to Crypto mentioned some. I think it was him that was mentioning it because um, I watched a few videos today because I was at work and I, I couldn't get to make my own video. So I was just watching other people's videos and see what they were talking about. But one thing I've been talking about uh, personally with people that I know is that what if they put NFTs in kids meals? You know, when you go and you get a kids meal at McDonald's or something like that, you get a free collectible for your phone because a lot of kids have phones nowadays. Or maybe you get to choose. Do you want the physical collectible or do you want the NFT collectible? Uh, and so I was really excited about that type of idea and brand partnerships and stuff like that uh, because, I mean, come on, any kind of activity brings people to the app, spends more money in the app, uh, makes integrates, it goes vertical, you know, the, the um, marketing goes vertical because you've got, okay, you've got the free giveaways, you've got the, the paid advertisements from companies paying you, you're paying other people for licenses because they're more valuable. And so it just starts stacking up and a lot of OMI could get burnt that way. Um, but not only that, I just want the collectibles. I mean, I'll eat a happy meal if I get like one of those little pancake head men or something like that from McDonald's as an NFT back from the eighties. Woo. That'd be kind of cool. You know, maybe a little Mac the night when I buy a, uh, when I buy a big Mac, that'd be pretty cool. That big old moon head guy. Um, but one of the things he mentioned, and I had not thought about this before I had thought about maybe movie premieres, you know, you scan your ticket or something like that and you get a free collectible. And it sounds like maybe that's the way they're headed. Uh, you know, so like say they do remake Back to the Future and then you go in there and you get the hoverboard or something like that for showing up to the premiere. Uh, you know, that'd be pretty dang cool. Um, but he's, he said maybe you're walking down the street and there's like a giant Batman over a building and you go into this building and then you can collect collectibles that are dropping down from the Batman. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's really cool. Now, obviously, I think that people could, you know, a restaurant or something like that could say, hey, come on in and get this free collectible because they want to sell meals. Um, you know, but I had not thought about like this giant AR thing that you can like look around town and find these big AR, uh, figures above. I mean, come, could you imagine that at like car lots, you know, they got the little whippy guy out there, you know, dancing out by the street with the air blowing through him. But instead you just go to the car, you go down to where the cars are all at and you start looking around. And next thing you know, you see like a, a Z71 GMC pickup and you go, if you go into the dealership you get that little collectible for free. Uh, so that's pretty cool if you could just like look around town and see, oh, there's one over there. Let's go see what it is. And it could actually bring a draw in from within inside the app. And that, that seems really cool to me. The whole movie premiere and everything, I mean, that's awesome. There's just a lot of things that they can do with this. One of the things that they're talking about is, now I've been telling you guys that I'm waiting for the Ecomi Secure Wallet. It's out of stock, but I wanted it because I feel like it's, it, it natively supports Omi. Um, you know, and I want to store there, especially if you're going to be able to stake from that wallet. And Reese wasn't exactly sure if you were going to be able to stake from within the wallet. He said, but you know, that's probably something they would lean towards. It sounds like because they're a tech company. So they're going to do as much tech involving the, er, their other tech as they can. But he mentioned something really cool, like being able to go in and get a little Omi storage wallet and then, uh, you know, from like GameStop or Walmart or something like that, that has a download code for a collectible. And it would be an only, an OMI only wallet that stores your OMI and also your collectibles. And so then uh, if that's the case, he says it's going to be a lot better price point and maybe like $29.99 or something like that is what they were talking about. So could you imagine if you could just go in there and collect like little uh, collectibles with the cards that would, that would like get people in the stores to see what VV is, which would bring them to the app, get people from the app to the store to buy those collectibles that aren't available in the app. Uh, you could store your OMI on that wallet and stake it. And, uh, oh, let me get, let me, let me check off my stuff over here so I don't keep uh, talking about the same thing. But you go, you go to stake it and maybe by staking it, you get special collectibles. And that's what he was saying is that you know, a lot of people, when they stake their uh, cryptocurrency, they're getting more of that cryptocurrency. And so the the questioners, the DGENs, I guess they call themselves, uh, were asking him about whether there was going to be some sort of a reward uh, in OMI for staking your OMI. And he said, no, I think most of the, the you know, the rewards are going to be in-app. So you're going to be able to like stake so much OMI for such amount of time. And then you're going to be able to get free collectibles or you're going to be able to get rare gems like golden gems that you can buy special collectibles with. 
Oh man, I don't know. Gag, gag, would you, you got them diamond hands right now, but could you have them golden gem hands? Maybe, she says maybe, she doesn't really know, she's drunk. Um, and so that you'd be able to get special collectibles that other people couldn't get by staking your Omi. In addition to that, there's still gonna be the master collector program, uh, the details of which are kind of variable and there's basically it sounds like maybe you could be a master batman collector or a master myrmicorn collector like me i got lots of myrmicornos um and i think people are sleeping on the myrmicornos myself i mean like there's only six thousand of the uncommons right uh so once there's millions of people in the app people are going to want those things i don't care they're going to want to complete that set especially if their their wives and daughters are on the app you know and they want or or their sons maybe their sons like the myrmicornos you know i mean they're kind of cute uh, so maybe, you know, people want that to complete their set. So I think they're sleeping on them a little bit. So I have quite a few uncommons, uh, but I have traded a few of them off, uh, in, in our group on Facebook, uh, which is going to be available for trades until, until, uh, Vivi allows us to trade in the app because I, I don't want to compete with Vivi. I want to support Vivi. So if they start trading in the app, I'm just going to do all my trades there. Um, but they might be having like master collector type benefits for those people. And he mentioned something like 10 seconds early access to drops. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, there's probably going to be enough master collectors that if that's the case, all the ultra rares are going to be sold to the master collectors uh, because that first 10 seconds is going to be key. Unless you have internet like my internet, and then you're still not even going to be get, able to get one even mm. with a 10 second head start, which is just going to suck. I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to go move on top of a 5G tower. Uh, so anyway, they asked him about Binance Smart Chain or Pancake Swap, and he was saying that you know it doesn't seem like that's going to be happening anytime soon. They were talking about the high fees on Ethereum, and he's like, "Well, yeah, it's high for now, but you know, obviously, he was alluding to ETH 2.0, um, and then Uniswap will be much more affordable. Obviously, I'd ra I'd much rather be uh, using Ethereum than BNB, uh, but Ethereum's so expensive. I've started doing a lot of stuff on Pancake Swap, not a lot of stuff, a little bit of stuff, uh, but." I would rather do it with Ethereum because it's more decentralized. Uh, unfortunately, it's just too expensive. So once they once they can fix that, once they allow more transactions per second and it's cheaper, uh, you know, then I would be doing more on Uniswap than I would on PancakeSwap anyway. So what that brings me to is that people had this uh, Ecomi BEP20 token here that they found in their trust wallet and they thought that that was uh, indic indicative that it was going to be available on Binance. Now, do I think it's gonna be available on, on Binance uh, Exchange? Yeah, possibly, but it doesn't sound like they're gonna put it on the Binance Smart Chain. I do not believe this is a real token. I would not buy it if I were you guys, and I would not transfer any OMI in there if it allows you to somehow, I, I don't know how it works. Uh, but people have compared the contract numbers and they don't match. Anybody can go on there and make a token. Uh, you can see that the logo isn't even exactly the same. If you, if you look up here at the Go20 logo for OMI versus this one down here, it's just a little bit off. It's just, it's just I think it's a scam. Don't, don't do it, guys. I don't want you to get scammed, okay? Um, Themed showrooms, oh, that's a big one. And that's something that I think is going to create a lot of Ecomi burn as well, is that when all these accessories come out for your collectibles, like, uh, you know, he was mentioning the Batcave or a Dark Alley or something like that, you know, if you could get like Arkham Asylum, some kind of crazy backgrounds like that, or, or maybe even like the full blown thing, right? Like a house size, could you imagine getting like a house size uh, Batcave and you could go and put your Batman all around the house and then you could drop your vault on the yard and you could go walk around inside that house and see the Batman and, and, and uh, you know, Harley Quinn and whatever's going on in there. <laughs> um, you know, you see it like you could walk through the rooms and everything with your phone or possibly even in VR with the VV verse because they did mention that Ready Player One is their end game goal. My guys, guys, the whole reason that I got involved in Earth 2 is because I'm wanting Ready Player One. I've wanted it since I was a little kid. I told the people that I talked to about Earth 2, if any of them still watch me, they're probably mad because I mostly do VV videos, uh, you know, but I can only do like one video a day because of time constraints and, and, and stuff. So I, I've been focusing on VV right now because not a lot's been happening with Earth 2, but I want Ready Player One. I, I got the Power Glove. I wanted the Power Glove when I was a little kid. I never got the Power Glove. But the power glove was lame anyway. That was for Nintendo. For you guys, it looked beep, 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 beep. And then they tried to pretend that it was virtual reality. But I like virtual reality. And I want Ready Player One. I want to go into my own home with my own collectibles around and everything. Like, I just need Ready Player One. I don't care what company does it. Obviously, I'd rather it be Earth 2 or Vivi since I'm around, you know, invested in both of them. 
But man, I need some Ready Player One action in my life. Okay. So, themed showrooms. I mean, that's just going to be so cool. If you could just put on your VR headset and walk through your showroom and look at your collectibles is really cool. Okay, so they asked him about the numbers. Like we were, I was kind of wondering this. Like if you drop the DeLoreans, are you keeping 1985 and 1955 and 1885 for yourselves? Or are you just taking the first 40 that come off? And he was saying that they don't keep the first 40 of every run. If there's a very limited run, it was like the first 12 or something. They were talking about the Golden Mooglies, but I don't think we're going to have a drop that small in the future. So I could, that's kind of irrelevant. So let's just go with the number 40 right now. They keep off the top. Uh, he's saying they just take the first 40 and all of the number ones are going into the VV vault and you know that'll be on display for you to I guess you could walk through the VV vault probably uh, at some point in time but that's going to be in the VV showroom so that's not going to be available so nobody's going to have number ones uh, maybe somebody got one in the past but it doesn't sound like they're going to get them in the future and then the one through 40s they say for uh, promotions marketings giveaways and that's in addition to whatever the licensors require. So, you know, when they go to get a license, that's obviously part of the negotiations. Like maybe they didn't, but maybe Back to the Future would say, we want all the 1985s. That's just bottom line. And they would say, okay, well, we have to do that because we want the license. Uh, so that, that happens too. Uh, people were asking him about GoChain and why they picked GoChain. He said GoChain was the best available at the time. Maybe it's still the best available. I don't know. Maybe Cardano is better or something like that. Uh, but it sounds like another blockchain is not out of the question. If it did happen that, that another blockchain was used and they migrated to that blockchain, uh, we would just get like a, an Omi fork, I'm sure. So they would just exchange. I just went through one of these with Student Coin, where they forked a V2 for a, a second layer solution so that they could be faster and cheaper because they're on Ethereum. And so it's very expensive to use Ethereum. So they went to version two so that it was cheaper. And if you if you haven't looked at Student Coin, uh, I've got a link in the description and top, pinned to the top comment. Uh, they've been doing pretty good with their roadmap and they've got three exchanges that are supposed to be available after their uh, ICO launch pad is over in May. Uh, so maybe take a look at that. Not financial advice though. I just bought a little tiny bit, you know, just so that I had it so I could check it out. They've got kind of a Facebook marketing plan. Uh, okay, and so they one thing that he said... Uh, oh, well, here they, he, they asked him about going to Japan. They were in Japan at that toy convention or whatever it was about licenses there. And he said he didn't have any details on it, but he was very tight lipped about all the licenses. So, you know, he, he's legally trying to protect himself in Vivi, uh, and, which is very smart. So, you know, we can pry, but uh, it's really it's really not our place to pry either. Like when they need to when they're ready to announce something then they should announce it. But uh, for us to try to, you know, pick at it. I mean, if they let something slip on their own or if they plant some seeds, you know, maybe they want them planted and then we can dig into it. But as far as, like they put Hulk on one of their Medium articles, uh, obviously they're planting the seed that they have Marvel. You know, it's not an oversight, okay? So they're planting the seed that they have Marvel. Uh, you know, and I, I don't mind talking about that. But as far as like, you know, bugging them and bugging them and bugging them about what the thing is, We'll just see it when we see it. You know, I, I feel like we can all infer that they probably have a leg up at possibly having poke. Oh, they did ask him though. I'm going to dig. I'm doing exactly what I said. Not, okay. They asked him if the fact that um, Pokemon Go. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Here we go again. Gag. You got me frozen over here. Gag. You got me frozen. New movie recording. Everything is Gag's fault. She's probably running her hair dryer too hot, using up all the electricity, and it froze me down there, okay? Oh, I'll move myself up. Uh, so they asked him about uh, Pokemon Go. If Pokemon Go being an AR game, augmented reality game, uh, interfered with the licensing negotiations uh, with Vivi, or the fact that Vivi offers AR and wants to get into gamification, if that was interfering with their Pokemon Go, or, you know, or could negotiates with other licensors. And he was just like, no, not that I know of. So he didn't come out specifically and say, we're, we're, not, we're not talking about Pokemon or I can't confirm that we've even been in negotiations with Pokemon. He just kind of glazed over it. Probably doesn't mean anything. Not confirmed. But Alcon named Pokemon. Okay, that's all. David, you brought Pokemon to Australia. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here's the one thing that I wanted to talk about. This is the one thing from the interview that I was like, they really haven't come out and explained it well. He said they just introduced burn in the marketplace, in the market. And I just, I even tweeted him and I asked, I said, hey, what, what's the deal? Like, it looks to me in the token metrics, the original page, and I'll go back over it again. I've gone over it three or four times. I'll go back over it again. But it looks to me like all of the gems, all of the new gems that were bought with Fiat in the app 
resulted in a 100% burn of OMI if it was spent in the market. So the market always looked like it was going to burn more Ecomi than the store. But now they've just totally forgotten about that and glazed over it and they keep bragging about this 2.5% that's going to get burned on every transaction in the market, but they're not addressing the fact that initially they were saying 100% of the gems that were purchased with fiat and spent in the market were going to be burned. Uh, so I don't, you know, that, that part, that kind of, mm -hmm. I like everything they're saying, but that part sticks in my craw a little bit, especially because they're kind of like doing the run around. They're not really addressing it. They're beating around the bush, right? They're coming out as if it's great news that this has happened, but we all know that they were supposed to be burning a lot more than that. So that's a little bit weird. And I had, you know, obviously when I'm looking at it, I'm going, wow, that's a lot of burning that's going to be happening when people are trading collectibles back and forth. And now come to find out that's not all even being burnt. Now, I do think there's going to be a lot of burn coming with the accessories, with advertising, with AR advertising, with special collectible drops, with probably monthly subscriptions and stuff like that that are going on for their games. Um, so there's probably going to be a lot of burn. I probably don't have to worry about it. But, you know, I would like it to be what it was uh, supposed to be originally, or I'd at least like them to address that. So, uh, but... Omi is my homie. I'm still buying more. I bought more today. I bought 1,400 more Omi. I scaled back my purchases because I'm uh, trying to, I want to buy more. I want to buy more collectibles, but I need to get in the market. Um, and so I have been buying them slowly, you know, outside the market, but I really want to buy them in the market. I don't want to buy expensive collectibles outside the market because it's too risky. I want to be in the market and buy them. Um, but I did let, I did let Vivi know, I'll have you know, um, that I, I, I tweeted him. I let him know. I know you guys have been waiting for me to let you know. And I am open to licensing my likeness for a limited run of collectibles. But I'm still trying to convince Gag. Gag, no. Cameras don't steal your soul. God, she's stuck in the 1800s. I'm still trying to convince Gag. And so I'll have to get back to you on it. Okay, so if you want to see if I get my own collectible, you're going to have to get to sub it, sub it, sub it, sub it, sub it.